I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, even with the snow outside, even with the pandemic going on, even with all kinds of turmoil in the uh, capital, no matter what's going on, I thank God we can go into the house of the Lord and get some peace, get some joy. And if you weren't able to make it inside, we praise God that he travels outside. Amen. So that, we, that he's with you wherever you are. Get your coffee, get your tea, sit back, have breakfast while we uh, not entertain you, but while we worship with you and we encourage you to worship with us. Won't you join us for our call to worship? Good morning. Come to worship this day. Bring with you all your joy and sorrow. Jesus will offer you will offer hope. Come and worship believing in the power of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus will bring transformation and healing as we worship. Feel the presence of God in your praise and thanksgiving. When praise goes up, blessings come down. Jesus teaches us new ways to live, love, and be. Let us worship this Lord together. Amen. Amen. Is this, is your mic on? And can we get that box off of the screen any chance? Okay. Buenos días. Ven a adorar en este nuevo día. Traemos jun tragaremos juntos con nosotros todas nuestras alegrías y penas. Jesús nos traerá esperanza. Vengan a adorar, adoramos a Dios. Creyendo en el poder de sus en el poder, en el poder de él a través de Jesucristo. Jesús traerá transformación y sanación a nuestras vidas. A llevar nuestras oraciones, podemos sentir la presencia de Dios en, esta, en nosotros, alabanza y en nosotros, en nuestras acciones de gracias. Cuando las alabanzas suben, las bendiciones bajan. Jesús nos enseña nuevas formas de vivir, amar y ser. Adoremos al Señor junto y juntas. Amén. Amén. Our old, scripture check, uh, old Testament scripture reading for today comes from Psalm 111. I just want to stop and say hallelujah. Is that all right? I just want to stop and say praise the Lord. All right? It's too quiet. I just want to celebrate. I want to have some joy. I want to have a little bit of noise in the house. It's too quiet. I know in a lot of churches I could come in and be quiet, but the, 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 the word says to come into his presence with singing, with gladness. Hallelujah. Ooh. From Psalm 111, the word says, Praise the Lord, and I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation and everybody else. Amen. <laughs> Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He is gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is, never mind, he is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, in giving them the heritage of the nations. 
The work of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, time for opening prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we give you thanks that you know that we love us. Open our hearts and spirit this day to hear the great good news of your power and your presence with all of your people. Fill our hearts with rejoicing as the words are proclaimed in the songs and stories. Help us through the power of your Holy Spirit grow deeper, wider, and fuller in, the, in our knowledge and understanding of your ways and to live according to your divine wisdom and love through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Dios Todopoderoso y Misericordioso, te damos gracias por conocernos y amarnos. Abrimos nuestros corazones y espíritus en este día para escuchar las grandes noticias de tu poder y de tu presencia con todo tu pueblo. Llena nuestras almas con Llena nuestros corazones de rencor, mentiras de tu palabra se proclaman en, este, en un canto y a través de la historia. Ayúdanos por miedo de poder de tu Espíritu Santo a crecer más, más y plenamente en nuestro conocimiento y comprensión de tus caminos y a vivir de acuerdo con tu sabiduría y divino amor. Por miedo de Jesucristo, nuestro Señor, oremos. Amén. Amen. Now won't you join us for our praise and worship? God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I feel a praise coming on. Anybody know when blessing, when praises go up, blessings come down. Hallelujah.
I'm talking about now it feels warmer in here already doesn't it Amen. yes hallelujah 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 God is great and greatly to be praised yes. amen it's even almost hard to confess uh, confess our sins and falling short after that is such a celebration but before we move forward we always want to move into the presence of God penitent amen throwing the things off of us from the past week or the past months or the past year asking God to fill in those broken places to make those rough edges smooth so we come before God in confession acknowledging that we're not always what we should be but God is always faithful and he's faithful and he's just and he's merciful won't you pray with me now our prayer of confession loving God we often think we know so much that we presume to judge others. We arrogantly announce our own righteousness without a compassionate thought. We proclaim your word when it suits us and ignore it when it doesn't. There have been so many times in which our humble help would have been a blessing to someone, but we have placed our comforts before serving others. In the competing voices of today's world, we have turned around and around trying to find a way to live. Help us, merciful God, to again listen to you. Help us to truly open our hearts to you. Remind us again of your great love and presence in our lives. Forgive us our foolish stubbornness. Create in us new spirits filled with your love, offering, offering peace and hope to all. In the name of Jesus, we pray and let the church say amen. Amen. Dios amoroso, a mundo pensamos que sabemos tanto, que creemos poder, podemos jugar, juzgar a los demás. Anunciamos arrogantemente nuestra, nuestra propia justicia, sin un pensamiento de compasivo. Proclamamos tu palabra cuando nos conviene y, lo, y la ignoramos cuando no es conveniente para nosotros y nosotras. En tantas ocasiones nuestra unidad ha ayudado a abrir, sido una bendición para alguien, pero nosotros, pero Hemos ante puesto nuestras comedades en encima de las posibilidades de servir a los demás. En medio de tu de las veces que competivas del mundo de hoy nos am, nos hemos dado la fulidad y alrededor trayendo de trayendo de encontrar el camino para vivir ayúdanos Dios misericordioso a escuchar de la nueva ayudarnos a abrir verdaderamente nuestros corazones hacia ti 
recluidos de, nueva, de, de nuevo tu gran amor y presencia en nuestra vida. Perdona nuestras insentividades en en y nuestra terquedad. Que en nosotros una nueva espíritu llenen de tu amor, ofreciendo paz y esperanza a todos y a todas. En el nombre de Jesucristo, oramos. Amén. 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 It's good to know that Jesus speaks all languages. Amen. Quiet your hearts, beloved of God, for God is speaking to you with love, forgiveness, and redemption. Rest your spirits, struggling ones, for God will surround you with peace. Open your life to God's power and presence, and do not be afraid. God is with us now and for all time. Nosotros, que nosotros corazones estén callados y se sientan amados por Dios, porque Dios nos ha estado hablando con amor, perdón y redención. Desacamos nuestros espíritus porque Dios nos rodea de paz. Abrazamos nuestras vidas al poder y a la presencia de Dios y no tengamos miedo. Dios está con nosotros ahora y por siempre. Amen. All right, now we just got a few uh, announcements that we want to be sure we keeping every we are keeping everyone up to date. Number one, we are open. <laughs> um, if we will, if we have a shutdown due to weather or anything else, a so one call will go out to the congregation. So if you're ever curious about whether or not we're open, um, you can go to our website and announcement should come up. And also, as I said, if you haven't received a phone call and you're on our call list, you should usually get that by 8.30 at the latest, I would think. So we are open and having driven safely here, we praise God. We're uh, lifting up everybody else, right? Amen. We did see a few cars off the road coming in, so we just pray for safe travels for those who are still out. We know that we've got more weather coming, um, but we know God is a God that can speak to the, the, the snow and the winds and the rain, so we're not worried about that. also want to lift up everyone to, um, um, let's see, how do I want to do this? The COVID vaccines. Um, I know that there's mixed emotions on taking them and not taking them. And since I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to say one way or another what anyone should do. But for those who do want them, we pray that the vaccines are making it where they need to. In watching the news, unfortunately, the populations that are most at risk um, are not getting the vaccines as quickly as we, as we would like. Uh, we know that our uh, black and brown skinned um, sisters and brothers have a higher uh, rate of, of contracting COVID and also of dying from COVID. So we praise God that we have had, the health department has targeted some areas in our high minority populated neighborhoods to allow us to get vaccines. We made um, calls the week before last, we made calls last week to get 85 plus and to get 75 plus and they didn't even fill up so we called back and we get, gave them some 70 plus. So we are trying to get those out wherever they are. If you know of somebody who is um, in, in those, uh, those age ranges, 75 and above right now, um, the next time we have a, uh, we know that some are available, we will let you know. We've been getting those done at St. Margaret. Of course, you can get them done other places, but that's to make sure that we get them in the hardest hit neighborhood. So we just praise God that that's been available to us. <clears throat> Lent is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Amen. Hallelujah. I say that, you know, it's a little bittersweet because, you know, so I'm supposed to be giving up some things. Um, just want to, you know, for those of you who join us in Lent, it is a time of fasting and prayer. Did I say fasting? Fasting and prayer. So if you're going to join us as we uh, celebrate, and I shouldn't even say celebrate, meditate, on uh, the preparation as Jesus prepared for his ministry, as, as um, Moses, as many of the prophets have done that have gone into fasting and, and preparation, we want to do the same during this time of Lent. 
Um, we're going to have a special theme in Bible study. I think we're going to do um, Your Body is a Temple, I believe is what we're going to do in Bible study, and we might have some uh, sermons along that line. But since we're going into Black History Month as well, might be mixing it up. But I just wanted to be sure that you're thinking about the next couple of weeks. One of the things I'm meditating on, and I'm meditating on it because it can get a little hard, amen? One of the things I'm trying to fast from is complaining. Complaining. I think I might implode <laughs> if I can't get some stuff off my head and my heart sometimes. But if I, I, I said I, if I could go 40 days without a complaint about anything, how I wonder what I would feel like. So that's one of the things that I'm looking at in addition to uh, food. But, you know, there's television, there's social media, there's things to give up, there's things to take away. It's whatever your choice is. It is your fast, and that's between you and God. All right, hopefully you've received a letter from your pastor um, just giving updates as to things that, were, that are going on in the church. Wanted to be sure that everyone is being kept aware. Hopefully you've seen it. If you did not, please reach out to the office so we can get you a copy. Please read it. It has important information in there about myself, about the church, and about uh, so quite frequent, uh, frequently asked questions and answers. So we want to be sure that we get that out to you and that you're aware of what's going on. Fireside chats with the pastor via Zoom are available. They are calling families to sign you up, so be sure to sign up for that. Gives you an opportunity to talk to me directly and uh, be in meeting with me. All right. Also, we expect to have a congregational meeting. Would have been normally in January, but due to uh, the logistics you saw in the letter, we're shooting for the first quarter, but that's a time where we'll make a lot more announcements of things that are going on, try to keep the congregation aware of everything. All right. Those are the announcements other than one other thing, unless I've missed something. Anyone? All right. Then so... Uh, we kind of got out of the habit as we moved, ran, ran from outside inside. But normally birthdays are celebrated at the end of the month, and I have the newsletter. So I'm going to read off names. If I'm, uh, if I'm off on this, please, apo I apologize. We'll hopefully have these up for the, on the screen for you next month. Queen Peters Thornton, January 1st. Michael Holbert, January 1st. Lisa Adbile, Ad, I, I don't know, Lisa Adbile. January 3rd, Susie Grierson, January 5th, Graciela Com Campbell McLaughlin, jo uh, January 7th, Elizabeth Olinger, January 12th, Larry Jones, January 13th, Irene Campuzano, J uh, January 14th, Marcus Johnson, January 14th, amen, amen, Andrea Hurdle, January 15th, Virginia Day, January 17th, Zola Priest, January 19th, Rosalind Givens, January 20th, 20th, Kevin Bleicher, January 20th, Solomon of Oltry, January 23rd, Thomas Richardson, January 27th, Diane Harris, January 28th, Harold Harris Jr., January 28th, and your pastor, January 28th, hallelujah, amen. Philomena Nicaccio, January 29th, Ethel Smith, January 30th, Nicholas Zachary, January 30th. Did I miss any January birthdays of anyone who's here? All right, if you know if you know or are able to reach out with any of these people, please uh, send them a birthday wish or a call. Uh, we always celebrate the Lord to give us another year. I don't care how young or how young you feel, but it's always a celebration to be blessed to have another year, especially as we watch this pandemic tick off and the numbers climb with this pandemic. We praise God. Now, now, now let's be clear. We praise God either way because death is not the end. Precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, amen? So we grieve just because we lose people, we want to have them here. But we celebrate that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So it's a celebration either way. But for those of us who are left here in the world, we just praise the Lord that we're still with the ones that we love here. And then we'll praise them again another day when we're all gathered together again one day. All right. <clears throat> My voice is trying to close in on me. I apologize. I've been uh, being treated for bronchitis and uh, my voice comes and goes, but I know one thing, the Lord has never not allowed me to preach. So I know that that's going to happen today. It just might not be the same way it normally is. All right. So at this time, we want to recognize any visitors. Do we have any visitors that want to stand up? Let us know who they are. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. We're happy to have you with us. That's what I'm talking about. I know online you all didn't get to hear Deacon Johnson from Mount Zion, but he said his church has been, you know, the weather. We saw all kinds of cancellations going on. But he says when church is closed, he finds one. And hallelujah, he's here. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. The Lord appreciates faithfulness. And in no way would I ever say, come out if you're worried. Well, that's why we say, if you're worried about coming, you know, we've done all the protocols, but if you're worried about it, stay home. If you're worried about the snow or the rain or anything, stay home. But I'm telling you, there's, there's something that happens. One time I canceled church. One time I canceled church due to weather, and there were people that showed up. Didn't get the announcement. I was like, Pastor, it wasn't that bad. It was only three or four inches. And I was like, okay, all right. I said that was the last time I was going to do it, unless they declared a weather emergency. And since we didn't, look at God, look at God. And it's so good to have you with us, Deacon Johnson. Pass our blessings on to your pastor and your congregation. But it's good to have you with us because you're part of the family. Amen. Let's greet, greet one another in the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. You know, Jesus loves you. We love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So now it's time for our offerings to be presented. Praise God for an opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Hall hasn't he been good to you? I tell you, I just got my stimulus check. I said, praise God. <laughs> Look at God. So I had to be sure I ran in here and gave God something back to bless me like that. Hallelujah. According to Hebrews 13, 16, they tell us, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. When we give, we are sharing God's love and grace with the world. Therefore, let us give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of God's kingdom. No nos deshacemos de hacer el bien y compartir lo que tenemos, porque tales sacrificios agradan a Dios. Cuando damos, entramos, estamos compartiendo el amor y la gracia de Dios con el mundo. Por lo tanto, demos con generosidad, sacrificio y alegría para la construcción de la obra del reino de Dios. For those that are present, we ask that you prepare your offering now. Amen. For those that are worshiping online after the service, you may send it directly to College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Or you can give through Cash App on our website or Facebook. May the Lord bless you in your giving. Para aquellos que están presentes, les pedimos que preparen su ofrenda ahora. Por aquellos que adorarán en línea después del servicio pueden enviar directamente al College Hill 1547 um, Philadelphia Drive a dar a través del Cash App en nuestro sitio web o Facebook que el Señor les bendiga en vuestra donación Amen and as we give, we always love to praise the Lord in song because it's a time of celebration and praise. There ought to be a smile on your face when you have an opportunity to give back. Hallelujah and amen. What the devil stole from me. 
Ushers may come forward at this time. Amen. Won't you pray with me? Gracious God, accept these tithes and offerings we present to you today from our hearts. Please help us to be diligent savers, wise spenders, and generous givers. May these bring pleasure in your presence. May our sincere desire to be faithful stewards bring joy to your heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray and let the church say amen. Dios misericordioso, acepta estos diezmos y ofrendas que te presentamos hoy. Das de lo, das de lo el más, más profundo de nuestras, nuestros corazones. Por favor, ayúdanos a ser audadores, diligentes, sabios, castardosos y generosos. Que estas ofrendas sean, sean recabas con placer en tu presencia. Que nosotros, sincero, sincero deseo de ser fieles, morados, trai, traer gozo de tu corazón por medio de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Good morning, College Hill. Would you please stand for the reading of the New Testament scripture? Bear with me. The New Testament reading comes from the epistle, Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we, who died to sin, go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you, must, so you always must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Unless you just want to praise with us, hallelujah. Across the heart 
this desert I'll travel near a fire for your glory I would do anything just to see you to behold you as my king
Sit in that right now. How many want to be in the presence of the Lord? How many just want to see his face, just feel his light shine upon you? How many just want to be wherever God is? And since we serve an omnipresent God, that's not hard. But the Lord says if you seek after him, he will seek after you. For your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for his glory. What are we willing to do? Anything? The song says anything. That doesn't mean just praise him when it's comfortable. That doesn't mean just show up when you feel like it. That doesn't mean when only things are going well or you, when you got plenty of money in your bank account and you got a good job. That means when you fall on hard times, when you're dealing with unemployment, when you're waiting on a stimulus check. That means when there's hardly any money in the bank account. That means when you're dealing with sickness or illness and problems on the job or in your family for the glory of God. Ooh. You have to be willing to do anything because he'll certainly do anything for us. Thank you. Amen. 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 Give God some praise for the things he has done. Normally, I would open with a scripture, but there's going to be a whole bunch of scriptures today, amen? 
So I encourage you, if you have pen and paper, to get it out. You're going to need it. Get the DVD after the sermon, wherever you are at home. Find, uh, you know, we use iPads these days, phones. No shame in my game. I pull my phone out in church all the time because I take notes. So I'm just going to start out praying because, you know, today is uh, there's a lot to cover in a little bit of time. So I'm just going to ask, won't you pray with me? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear our humble cries. While on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. Most gracious and loving God, we come to you, our source of health and strength for joy and peace, our anything and our everything. Lord, we ask that you be with us right now. We know that you're already present, Lord, but we want to invite you into our presence. We want to welcome you. We want to let you know that we're happy that you're here, that we're not here by ourselves because we need you. Every hour we need you. So, Lord, we ask that as we prepare for this preaching moment, Lord, that you open our our ears, Lord, our spiritual ears, and you open our hearts, Lord, that, that we might receive the word, Lord, that you give us those spiritual eyes that we might be able to see, Lord, and that you give us an obedient and contrite heart that we might do your will. Lord, help us as we go forward to not go out the same way that we came in and use me despite myself Lord hide me behind your cross that no other word but yours goes forth to your glory we'll continue to glorify you and praise you in all that we do and let the church say amen amen and amen (coughs) all right today is the uh, conclusion of our sermon series on cast and carry and as I, as I summarize, you know, what we've learned the past several weeks, I'd like us to consider the theme, changing our default programs. Changing our default programs. Now, if you've missed any of the other weeks, I encourage you to go back because the detail that you're looking for, I can only summarize what we've done for the past several weeks. So if you want the detail, you need to go back for the other DVDs if you haven't seen them or go online. They are available, but I just needed to cover all of this and and be sure that we're ready to go forward into our new season. Now, you said, well, Pastor, why am I talking talking to you all about default programs? Some of us can barely even work our iPads and computers as it is, so I'm going to try to make this as simple as it is because I I don't know my computer that well. I know how to turn it on and use it a little bit, but I, I did have to go look this up. A default program is a pre-selected option adopted by a computer program or other mechanism when no alternative is specified by the user or the programmer. And this happens in all kinds of electronics. It's what the device will go to first unless you change it. Amen? Uh, I don't know how well you all are hearing me, but I feel like I'm shouting. Can I get a little bit more volume here? Or I'm just, I don't mean to be yelling at you. I feel like strain, I'm straining my voice. <coughs> Look, I would like to shout, but let's wait till the end. Amen. <coughs> okay, so, you know, uh, so this happens with any kind of device any kind of device. On my television, I have Spectrum TV, amen, and I'm not advertising for them because I'm not real pleased with them right now, but nonetheless, that's what I have. There we go. And when I turn on my television, it defaults to Spectrum TV Channel 1. No matter what's going on, as soon as I turn my television on, whatever I was watching before, if I turn it off and I turn it back on, it defaults to Spectrum TV Channel 1 rather than any of the other 300 channels that I have. For you see, there are all kinds of things that happen with our televisions and our our computers and our phones that we often think are just natural occurrences, but they are actually pre-programmed defaults that we don't even think about unless we want to change them. So I would submit to you today the reason that I'm talking about default programs is that many of us have default mental emotional, and even spiritual default programs or responses. 
that we don't even realize are in place because we've learned them over the years. They've been socialized into us. Some things have happened to us in our past and it's caused us to develop some default programs. They are things that we automatically think or do when faced with options, when faced with confrontation or temptation or uncertainty, change and emotions. Things such as when somebody hurts your feelings, right? Usually you're going to get upset and, and maybe even cry or shut down. You know, I don't mean like, I, I ain't going to cry. Well, wh whatever it is you do when you get upset, you know, you, you shut down, you don't talk at all, you know, whatever it is that you do. Or if somebody makes you mad, it can, it can get you angry and maybe you'll even curse them out. You didn't mean to. You're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, but your default program went back before you were saved. Amen. And next thing you know, you call somebody everything but a child of God. When faced with uncertainty or change, perhaps you get scared or uncomfortable and you get stubborn and you lash out. Or when you get in a new relationship, you treat the new person like you did in the last one because they've conditioned you to be always complaining and looking for them doing something wrong and they're not doing anything but your default program is to say, where you been? Where you going? What you doing? Right? Or, or when you get nervous, maybe you laugh or you have a nervous twitch. These are our default programs, often considered coping mechanisms. Now, they're so ingrained in us that we don't even realize that we're making a conscious choice because it's so natural that it doesn't even feel like a choice is programmed in us. Yet, virtually everything in our lives involves a choice. Tell somebody I have a choice. But see, often we don't, we don't change our default program to give ourselves options different than what we have been used to doing. For instance, if you're bad-tempered, you don't have to be. If you're bad-tempered, you don't have to say, I've been like this all my life. You do not have to be bad-tempered. No matter what's happened in your life, you do not have to be perpetually bitter and resentful. I don't care what you've gone through. You do not have to live that way. If you have low self-esteem and you're always doubting yourself, it, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have confidence. You can believe in yourself if you really try. I don't care how many people have told you you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not this enough. If you believe in yourself, you can have confidence when nobody else does. If there's anything about your personality or your life that you would like to change, it is literally up to you. There's hardly anything that is impossible to change with a God through whom all things are possible. Amen? So let's talk about changing some of these default settings. If you recall, we started Advent last year talking about things to let go of, to cast your cares. And then we began this year with the things to grab onto, right? Of course, this is not an exhaustive list. There's all kinds of things, but this is a good start. And if you follow this whole lesson, it will change your life in ways that you could never imagine. So first, we're going to review the earlier lessons and talk briefly about the hows and whys of carrying them out. Then we're going to conclude with the last lesson. Now, if you need a lot of details, like I said, go back to watch the earlier sermons because this is some good stuff, but I, we'd be here for four or five hours if I kept going and I think I'd be in here by myself, amen? <clears throat> Lock the doors. <laughs> Don't let anybody out till it's done, Brother Mac. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. <laughs> okay, so the first thing to let go of, if you recall, was stress, right? Stress is not of God. 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us, Cast all your anxiety on the Lord because he cares for you. Cast your anxiety, your worry, your stress on God. Why? Because God loves you. To contemplate now or to think about something, that's not the same as worrying about it. But to worry, to be anxious, or to stress means to continually concentrate on something that you cannot control. You're, you're, you're concentrating on something that you cannot control because if you could control it, you wouldn't have to worry about it, amen? If you know that your car is going to start, then you don't have to stress about your car not starting. You only get upset about things that you cannot control. 
But the blessing is, if you cannot control it, then it's God's problem now, not yours. If you can't control it, then it's not your problem. you got to give that over to God. Therefore, if we're stressing, we are not trusting God. Amen? You with me? So you might say, all right, well, that sounds good, but how do I stop stressing? Well, what do you want to hold on to? Faith and trust in God. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8 says, do not worry about anything. Do not worry about anything. Don't worry about a thing, right? But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If you're worrying, then pray so that you will stop worrying. If you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, then don't worry. The two do not go together. And in your prayer, be sure that you thank God for the things that he's already done, and you thank him in, in advance for what he's about to do. Amen? Because that solution is on the way. You should memorize Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Whenever I find myself getting upset, I say, Lord, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stress. I'm not going to worry about this. Be anxious about nothing, but in all things with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests be known unto God that the peace of God, which passes all understanding will guard my hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There's a reason that we say thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You can't go get your Bible sometime in the middle. When things get tough, you better know that word. You better be able to call on that word of God, because if it's not down in you, your default program is going to come up with something else. Next thing to let go of, the past and regret. You remember in Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 28, we heard about the story of Jacob and Esau and how scared Jacob was to run into his brother after all of the trickery and trickeration he had got away with all of his life, and it all came back to him. And so he had to wrestle with the, with the angel during the night. Because no matter what it is that you do, eventually you have to face your past. You might think you get away with something today. You might think you're getting over on people. But eventually you have to face your past. That's the only way to get past regret. You've got to address it, right, before you can get past it. At some point, you need to move past your past or you'll never get anywhere. Stop concentrating on the things that you cannot change. If it's already done, you cannot rewrite history. So don't beat yourself up about it. Face your past, fess up to it, and then address it with God. So you say, so how do I move past the past and regret? Hold on to who you are now, not who you used to be. Hold on to who you are now, not who you used to be. Why, preacher? 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Come on now. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. You don't have to be ashamed of some, someone who is not you anymore. Somebody knows you from back in the day, back in the hood, right? I remember when you used to, it might not have been that long ago. It might have just been last week. But people are always looking at who you used to be, and you, you don't have to be worried about that. Other people can keep judging you from the lens of your past, but you have to see you for who God is creating you to be. If you're growing in Christ, God is remaking you each and every day. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah, deacon. That's what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid. You gotta, you've got to be able to move forward. Fear is not of God. That's the enemy. Every time we try to do something to help ourselves or to move forward, fear or, or, or peer pressure is something that's going to get in your way to try to stop you from moving to your breakthrough. Do not be afraid as long as you've got God on your side. Now, the next thing we want to let go of is weight. Now, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, right? Because I've got my own poundage to let go of right now. But I'm talking about spiritual weight. I am also talking about physical weight, but that'll be in Lent. Amen. <clears throat> right now, I'm talking about the spiritual weight. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight. Now, it says more, but I'm going to stop there. He says, lay aside every weight 
Weight can hold you back as much as sin. Weight and sin are not necessarily the same thing. Not every bad thing is a sin. It's just something that can hold you down. The author of Hebrews tells us that some of us are not necessarily dragged down by sin as much as by weight. Weight is as simple as having bad habits or anything that stops us from moving forward. Weight could come in the form of fear, depression, low self-esteem, procrastination, selfishness. Now, that might be a sin, amen? Immaturity, long-time grief. Grief is okay, but except for when you hold on to it too long, it becomes a weight. Or anything else that might prevent us from being our best selves. If it is unnecessary weight, it makes us sluggish, it makes us slow, ineffective, and doubtful, and we need to let it go. Now, going back to Hebrews, it says also let go of sin. Now, some of us can relate to that too. The word says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Now, see, that sin stays up on you. Your sin gets close. It, it, it likes to be very, in case just you even turn it around, look, it's right there around your shoulder. It's, you can't even get, you can't sit down on your couch without sin sitting right, that, right down next to you. The sin that clings so closely, it says, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, because he knew what he was going to, he endured the cross, dis disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. If Jesus can do it, then come on, we can too, because we are his disciples. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you might be saying to yourself, then how do I let go of this stress, of this sin, of this weight, of this regret? Number one. Grab on to discipline. That's what you want to hold on to. Discipline. Get a hold of your life. Get yourself together, right? Get your emotions in order. Get your thoughts in order. Get your spirit in order. Discipline is the practice of training yourself to obey rules or a code of behaviors. You don't, we don't just get holy by ourselves. you got to train yourself to do it. That's just one of those things. You know, when you first started learning how to ride a bike, you had to tell yourself, don't lean this far. Okay, keep going. i got to do this. Once you, get, once you train yourself to ride a bike, you don't even think about it anymore, right? Because you got a new default program. You've got to train yourself. Today's denial is tomorrow's deliverance. Resist temptation to do something that is bad for you and not pleasing to God. First Peter 5 9 says, resist the devil. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering everybody's being tempted to do wrong. It's not just you. Don't think you're the only one that gets that late midnight phone call. You're not the only one that's tempted to do the wrong thing. Everybody gets tested. It's easy to give in to, fear, to peer pressure or temptation. But the enemy does not have as much power over us as we think. He doesn't. You know, Flip Wilson, you say that the devil made me do it right? The devil does not have that kind of power over us because James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist, that's all it takes. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil doesn't make us do things unless we allow ourselves to be susceptible to him. Number two, <clears throat> Life is all about choices, not excuses. Now, some of us got it the other way around. We got a whole bunch of excuses claiming that we don't have choices. But life is all about, a ch all about choices, not excuses. Because in Luke chapter 15, we heard about the prodigal son and the older brother and the father. And we didn't really talk about all that the older son that, that he did. That's who the story really was about. But for the purposes of the sermon, we stayed on the, what they call the prodigal son. Right? And in Luke chapter 15, one of the lessons that we got was free will can be a dangerous thing. 
You, you know, you, we always say we want to do whatever we want to do. We don't want anybody messing up our fun. We don't want anybody make me wear a mask. I don't want anybody taking away my rights. Sometimes free will is not a good thing. We don't always make good decisions on our own. God often lets us learn, though, by making mistakes. We can get in our own messes, which means we often have to stop blaming God for our stuff and take responsibility and accountability for what we do. Stop acting like every time something happens, why did God let this happen to me? Well, maybe if you hadn't done this, this, and this, you wouldn't find yourself in the mess you're in right now. Amen? Doesn't mean that he won't get you out, but we have to take accountability for our own choices. The other part is when something comes along, don't worry that you can't handle it. Don't think that you're not strong enough. Just because you might have failed four, five, 15, 20, 30 times trying to kick that habit, trying to get past that person, trying to get through school or whatever it is, it doesn't matter how many times you've been tested because 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Somebody should have said hallelujah right there. There is nothing that can come against you that God has not already prepared you for. And just remember Proverbs 3, 1 through 4 says, My child, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and the years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. To follow God's word, that's how you get a long, abundant life. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good repute in the spirit of God and people. <coughs> Now, you will have haters, amen, but you will, when you do what God tells you to do, you will have a good repute with people. They will know who you are, and they will respect, for you, respect you for who you are because you are following what God says do. Learn what God wants you to do and do it. Lesson number three. Come on, Holy Spirit. It's still in Luke 15. Choose good for yourself. I didn't say choose God, but that's choose God too. Choose good for yourself. In Luke 15, the, the young brother, after he uh, 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 had spent all his money, he, he, had to, he could choose whether or not he was going to wallow with the pigs or he was afraid to go home. Am I going to eat the slop or am I going to go and humble myself? The word says in verse 17, but when he came to himself, somebody needs to come to self. amen? When he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. He said, I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. Choose good for yourself. It doesn't matter what you've done or how long you've done it. It's a choice to decide, I'm not going to live like this anymore. This is my last day in this mess. This is my last day eating slop with the pigs. This is my last day not being in my father's house, being taken care of and provided for the way he has always planned for me. Now, in that, though, we have to remember to not be too hard on ourselves because we have to, number four, come to grips with not being perfect. Come to grips with not being perfect, for there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. We all mess up sometimes. Don't, let, don't go for the okie doke. Don't listen to those saints who say, well, I, don't, I don't sin anymore since I've been saved. They're lying. They're lying. The word says if you say that you do not sin, the truth is not in you. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we have to come, grip, to, come to grips with not being perfect. There's only one God and we're not it. So sometimes we fall short, but we don't have to perpetually beat up ourselves about that. How do we come to grips with imperfection, you ask? I'm glad you did. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. 
Whatever it is that, you don't, that you're sad that you did, that you're upset, that you're ashamed of, forgive yourself. Because if you have repented, if you've had a change of heart, God has already forgiven you. Romans 3.24, we are now justified by God's grace as a gift, as a gift, a free gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Come on, now grace covers imperfection. But number five, we don't get to sit on our laurels too long, right, Brother Bobby? Number five, yet it doesn't mean that we, that we get to stop our pursuit of Christian perfection. For we always have want to strive to be the best that we can be through Christ. So while we admit that we are not perfect, we don't want to give up trying. Amen? We don't want to live in a cheap grace or a complacent Christianity. I may not be what I want to be, right? But I don't want to stop trying right there because sanctification is a process. It is a faith journey that if we choose to go on it, well, it will take us the rest of our lives. I don't care how holy you think you are. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how much you pray, how much you serve. It will always be a process of growing in Christ. Because if we were perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. We have to be willing to change our minds and our thinking. That's why Paul says in Philippians, right, chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, and, you know, Paul was pretty confident in himself. He was like, of all of the apostles, I'm pretty good. I, I had done a lot of stuff. Paul, he, you know, opened all of these churches. Paul was one of the greatest writers of the New Testament. But Paul said, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. He said, beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me, forgetting the past, not worrying about what's already happened, and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal of the prize of the heavenly calling of God in Christ Jesus. But again, you might be saying, okay, that sounds good, but how? How do I do that? Well... There's always an answer to you. Jesus said, the Lord said, if you ask, it will be answered, right? So how do, we, how do we press forward? How do we move past all of this? Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be ye transformed. Do not be conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern not what is your will, not what is you want, what you want, but that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We've got to change our minds, our ways of thinking according to the world's standards. Come on now, that we could be convinced, not we, some people can be convinced to storm the Capitol, that you can be convinced to not wear a mask, that you can be convinced to do school shootings, that you be convinced to lie. We cannot be conformed to this world, but we've got to be conformed to God. In order to change our default programs, programs, we must be open to admitting our ways are not always the best way. Come on now. To admit that there are some things that's broke about us and that we need God's help to fix it. Be ye transformed. Stop acting like we can't change. Number six, in order to stay in God's will and on his path, we need to stay close to God. Luke 15, 14, still in that prodigal son story, the farther you move away from God, the further you move away from grace. See, when you're with God, when you're up close to God, he's got his hand over you, nobody touching my baby, whatever. But you start moving farther off and farther away from God, then God's hand will be, you pull his hand back, okay, you do this on your own, I'll let you do it on your own. When the son had spent everything, everything that he had been given him, his whole inheritance, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. 
The son would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. He had everything he needed at his father's house. And when he left his father's house, he went out and no one gave him anything. Most of the time, not all of the time, but many of the times that we're struggling is because we have moved outside of God's will for us and did things our own way. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Just like the father in the story, God is always waiting with open arms for us to come back. You don't have to stay away from church. You don't have to not pray because you're ashamed or not to have done the right thing. God is always waiting with open arms for us to come back. And in case you're ever wondering where to go or what to do, pray. Read his word for God is there just talking to us if we would ever listen. Psalm 37, 23 says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. If you pray before you move, then you got to know you're going to be walking in the right direction. And if you start walking in the wrong direction, he will light your path. I don't know. Get back over here. The footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Pray, read the word, listen to God. Now, if you want to know if you're on the right path, this is the last of the, of the last of the lessons from the previous weeks. Some of the signs and symbols are how you treat others. If you want to know if you're on the right path, am I living the right kind of life? Am I doing what God would have me do? You can gauge it a lot by how you treat others. In Matthew 22, when asked which commandment in the law was the greatest, Jesus responded, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. Now, the problem with that for most of us is everybody can say they love God. You don't know if they do or not, right? Because Jesus said, everybody says, Lord, Lord is not going to heaven. Just because somebody says they love God doesn't mean that they do. Just because they come in church doesn't mean they're coming here for God. But here's where you can't can't fake it till you make it on this one. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How we treat people is the gauge of our own relationship with God. You cannot love God and hate your neighbor or your coworker or your friend or your spouse or your pastor or your brother and sister in Christ or even your enemy. You have to love them all in word and in deed. I'm not talking about that romantic kind of love. You don't even have to like them, but you have to love them in word and in deed. Show them kindness and patience and long suffering. Some people will suffer you. Come on now. Some people will suffer you, but you got to be patient with them and love on them anyway. How do we do that? Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. Use your words and therefore your power wisely. Do not continually criticize, complain, or tear down. If that's what you're doing, something's wrong. Or the question, or do you exhort and encourage and build up? But also, not only that, but we need to also, you know, we, 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 we as Christians think we got to be nice all the time and we want to be, we want to be uh, uh, strong, but we, we need to be firm and loving because you also have to use your words for power and justice and equity. Speak truth to power. Ephesians 4.25 says, so then putting away all falsehood. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors. If we had been speaking more truth to people, half of the stuff that's going on in this nation wouldn't have been able to continue because people would have been talking to their friends and saying, look, you shouldn't be doing that. You know that's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. Especially if you love God, you know that you shouldn't be acting up, but we don't want to get involved. Speak truth to power. It said, let all of us speak truth to our neighbors for we are members of one another. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus and be silent about injustice. That's why our Black Black Lives Matter crosses are out there, because we refuse to be silent. For the Lord says through the prophet Micah, chapter 6, He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love, uh, love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. 
To love God is to care about the least and the left out and the marginalized. To see wrong and to see people mistreated should make you angry. That's an under indication that something is going wrong. Yet, somebody say yet. Yet anger should not incite violence and quarreling. For we are to use anger for good, not evil. Righteous anger, not selfish, not self-righteous, but righteous anger to look out for people. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devil, right? When we cannot control our anger, our anger or direct it towards driving positive change, it no longer matters how right we are. It doesn't matter if you're right if you do the wrong thing. You can't say, well, I was mad, that's why I did it. You still got to do the right thing. We don't want to be reduced to the level of our detractors. For when they go low, we go high. Come on now. Now, that doesn't mean to, to lay down and give up, but it does mean leave room for God. Let him do the heavy lifting, because if there is going to be blood, let it be on God's hands. Come on now. We don't need to be shedding any blood. We are peaceful protesters. For the, for the Lord says in Romans 12, 19, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. Come on now. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So how do we do that? Finally, if you recall, it's all about focus. Focus, focus, focus. If you remember that movie clip that we saw with Will Smith um, earlier, the, the couple of weeks ago, he told us that Whatever gets your focus, what, whatever somebody can get you to focus on, that's when they can get whatever they want. If they can get your focus over here, then they can take something over here, right? If you're looking over here, then you're not paying attention to what somebody's taking over there. They want to get your focus. Never let anyone take your focus off of God. Never let anyone take your focus off of God. That's the only way you can be fighting in church. You had to stop. You had to take your focus off of God, right? Because the Lord would not have his people in here fighting. And I'm not talking about college. I'm talking about all of our churches. We're good. Christians are better at fighting than some gangs. Come on now. Never let people take your focus off of God. If you do, you'll always get off track, which brings us to our final lessons. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Here's something to focus on. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. That's Paul, not me, by the way. There are so many wonderful things in the world that we could focus on, yet we're often distracted by the terrible things because there are so many going on, right? The things that make us angry and upset and emotional and depressed and disturbed. And, and it's not that we should ignore those things. But if we're not careful, continually concentrating on all of that bad stuff can keep us from seeing all of the incredible things that God is doing in the world. And all of the life-giving things that we are capable of. Yes, there will always be evil. But as long as God's people are in the world... There is always faith, hope, kindness, caring, generosity, forbearance, goodness, forgiveness, redemption, grace, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, patience, courage, friendliness, joy, peace, and love. Maybe we just need to concentrate on these things because there's more than enough people focusing on the evil stuff. Let us overcome evil with good. For if God is with us, it matters not who is against us. Stop giving people your power, the power over you. 
Stop letting them control how you feel. Stop walking around in the middle of this pandemic thinking that somehow God is not in control. Stop thinking that somehow the, the White House is being taken over, that the nation is going crazy. Whatever is happening, God has a plan and he will work it out if we just trust him. Most importantly, let us use the supreme power of God. Does anybody know what the supreme power of God is? Awesome? Ultimate? What's the power, though? His word? I'll give you that. But one word in particular. Love. Amen, amen. The supreme power of God. Amen. The supreme power. Yeah, there's a quiz on that one, right? I'm going to close you out with that one because we need this reminder. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. You know we know some cymbals. And if I have prophetic powers and, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. No matter how much I go to church or preach or sing in the choir or sit on committees, read my Bible and even pray. If I have not love, I am nothing. I added that line, right? Okay, so love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. I'm going to say that again, because some people say that we're Christians, but I don't know if we're measuring ourselves by this. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, but on God's way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. And I'm adding this. As for churches and denominations and rules and traditions, they will all come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part. I don't care what preacher you come to, God has only told them so much. We don't know what the end is going to be. Some things only God knows. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Some of us need to grow up. Because when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But when we will see face to face, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. This is how you change your default program. Amen, amen, and amen. That concludes our Advent sermon series as we're moving into Lent. I invite you to keep this particular scripture and these notes together because these are things we need to refer to every day, every week. We need reminders of who God is calling us to be. We need instructions. We need some guidance because there's a lot of lost people out there not because God is not speaking, not because God is not moving, not because God is not doing, but because we're not paying attention. Here we are in a pandemic. The Lord made it so that we had to stop and get 
just to get our attention. And some of us are still not listening yet. I don't know about you, but I want to come out of this thing better than I went in. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. We offer Christ. If there's somebody that's here today that doesn't know Jesus, we offer him today. If you're over the internet, of the airwaves, watching the DVD, all you have to do is just humble yourself, just submit over to him, say, I claim Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. I, I love God and I want to serve God. I want the redemption and the grace. I, I want the sanctification. I want the newness of life. I want everything that God has for me. And not only do I want, but I'm willing to give back. I'm willing to do what the Lord is asking me to do. I'm tired of doing this by myself but I'm going to start doing things God's way. The doors of the church are open. The doors to the kingdom are open. As we uh, leave the doors open, we also respond to the word in our response, cl uh, claiming and saying to God one more time what we're willing to do. Are we willing to change? Are we willing to come home from the pigs? Are we willing to go to our father's house? Are we willing to humble ourselves to him? Are we willing to walk along his path? Are we willing to love people around us? Are we willing to be a part of the change that we want to see in the world? That's the question. Won't you worship with us? over in you things are made new surrender my life to Christ moving moving forward moving forward not backwards moving forward not going back not going back Are you willing to follow God? Not looking back, but moving forward.
Amen. Amen. We're following the Lord forward. I'm going to mess up your name already. Did you say Anjane? Amen. We welcome Sister Anjane and her son and her nieces. We're just praying for her right now in the name of Jesus. Um, we're also happy, happy to know that as our doors are open, that people are walking in and saying, I want to be in the house of the Lord. But there's so many other people who have not been able to make it in, and we want to lift them up right now. I want to lift up Sister Vicki Eason, who's having a serious intestinal and health issues. I spoke with uh, Sister Vicki last week, and um, she is still continuing to bless other people. She's, she's having her own health issues, and she's helping other people and making sure they're taken care of. So we just pray that the Lord continues to strengthen her, not only for her journey, so that she can keep her ministry up to the people that, who are around them around her. We lift up, lift up Brother Lee Townsend, who's preparing for knee surgery on Monday. You all know Brother Lee and Sister Pat are so active, and they're doing so much, and I know how difficult it's going to be for Sister Pat to step away, but she is putting her family first and going to be watching over Brother Lee as he recovers, so we ask uh, God's hand of healing and protection over them, and you all do whatever you can. Drop them over some paper towels or some meals or whatever can be needed, COVID-friendly, amen, as they continue um, to go forward. We have continued prayers for Sue Thompson, um, Michael Love, and Shannon Estelle. Amen. In the name of Jesus, praying for them um, healing in the name of Jesus. Lifting up Aubrey Patch's mother. Her mother is in the neural ICU with meningitis and uh, brain seizures. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we know whatever it is, there is nothing that is too hard for God. Send your Holy Spirit to walk up and down those hospital rooms, Lord, and wrap her in your arms, Lord, and along with the others who are dealing with health issues. Lifting up those who are grieving, we lift up Sister Q's grandmother, Mary Jones, continued prayers for her stomach pain, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lifting up those who are looking for the uh, COVID registration. So far, College Hill has assist, assisted in the registration of 22 people, 75 years and older, for the COVID shot at St. Margaret's. Amen. And they assisted with nine people. Set, we assisted with nine people, 70 and older, to fill in some open slots. Only one recipient called to say that a few of her neighborhood friends also walked in and received a shot. Amen. Amen. Look at God. Also, we want to lift up Brother Glenn, who I understand came and shoveled our walks today, and I'm amazed at that because Brother Glenn, we've been lifting, up, lifting him up in prayer all week because um, his sister, Margaret Oglesby, they're saying is transitioning. Now, we, that's what the doctors say. We, we know it's up to God, amen? So we're praying for her healing right now in the name of Jesus. But if she, does, if she is walking through that valley that we all go through one day, we praise the Lord for a good shepherd and ask that the Lord just send his protection and peace and comfort of, uh, for that family. We lift up Brother Glenn and all the work that he does for our church. We lift up... Um, uh, Karen, uh, Dr. Karen Young and Dr. Daryl Young. Um, Dr. Karen Young had knee surgery, I want to say, about a week ago, and then she got a very serious infection and had to go back into surgery, I want to say, this past Saturday. She has come out of that well, so we're continuing to lift her up for divine healing. I got a call, and we lift up uh, Dr. Daryl Young, as he's probably going to have to go to some uh, facility to take care of him while she's not there. And uh, I want to lift up, I got a call from my own mother coming into church. My cousin Richard McFeeters is in Grandview Hospital, maybe having um, uh, gone through a stroke. We're not really sure. And I just want to say right now, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But I know somehow black and brown lives have to matter because he went to the hospital on Friday and they sent him home with extremely high blood pressure. And then he gets home and he falls and now he's in Grandview. So I, you know, I know that COVID's going on, but we have to be able to, that's why we should not have ever allowed the shutdown of Good Sam. We tried to prevent that. We need to be able to have enough health care and hospitals in our city to take care of everybody in the city. Everybody's life matters, no matter who they are, no matter how young, how old, what color, what creed, what religion, it doesn't matter. We've got to be able to be sure that the needs of everyone are met. Is there anybody else that I have not lifted up, anything that I've forgotten as we um, prepare for our prayers of the people? Um, Stephanie Stevens. 
Amen. Stephanie Stevens, praying for her continued healing in the name of Jesus. Pray for my cousin Jacqueline. Um, she just had something really, really bad happen to her. So just keep her lifted up. Absolutely. Lifting up um, your, uh, Brother Marcus's cousin Jacqueline in the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't need to know you already know. I want to lift up Sister Jamie Adams again for the same thing. Lord, you already know, praying for healing for her and her family in the name of Jesus. Anyone else? Um, Brother Herbert Brisbane's niece um, from MRI, um, she's, I think, eight years old, and she's on hospice now. I don't know all of the details behind it, but just prayers for their family. My Lord, absolutely, lifting her up and all of the MRI as they continue to go forward, but praising that uh, I've, we've known people to go into hospice and come out of hospice. So it, we, don't, we don't claim that it's over until God says it's over. Amen? Amen? You can give in to what the world says, but you better listen to what the Lord says. So we always want to keep on uh, lifting up. The Lord, if you are willing to hear our cries and our call, if you're willing to answer our prayers, Lord, please do so. But we always say, but thy will be done. Whatever you would have is good enough for us, Lord. We know it's better than we could ever ask or imagine. Anyone else? All right. Then hear now our prayers of the people. Lord, we come to you now with our whole hearts. Señor, venimos a ti ahora con todo nuestro corazón. We pray, Lord, for those who need to feel you close, who need the assurance of your love and the encouragement of your spirit. Oramos, Señor, por aquellos que necesitan sentirte cerca, que necesitan la seguridad de tu amor y el aliento de tu espíritu. We pray for those who are persecuted, who are discriminated against, who are mocked because of their faith or race or color. Oramos por aquellos que son perseguidos, que son discriminados, que son burlados por su fe, raza o color. We pray for those who are caught up in war, violence, and hatred, especially the innocent victims of these evils. Oramos por aquellos atrapados en la guerra, la violencia, y el odio, especialmente las víctimas inocentes de estos males. We pray for those who are destitute, who are hungry, who are refugees because of the selfishness and apathy of the world. Oramos por los inteligentes Los que también, los que tienen hambre, los que son refugiados por el egoísmo y la apetidad del mundo. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, filled with guilt, who are broken hearted or afraid because they are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Oramos por, por aquellos que están enfermos o sufriendo, llenas, llenos de culpa, que tienen el corazón roto o tienen miedo porque están enfermos en cuerpo, mente o espíritu. We pray for those who are numbed, who are angry, who are desolate because of loss and grief. Oramos por aquellos que están adormecidos, que están enojados, que están desolados debido a la Pérdida y el dolor. We pray at this time of financial turmoil for those who have lost jobs, those who struggle to pay bills, and those who have the power to affect positive change. Oramos por esto, por este momento de aquitación, financia por aquellos que han perdido empleos, aquellos que luchan por pagar las cuentas y aquellos que tienen el poder de provocar un cambio positivo. Be with us all, Lord, in all our daily struggles as we seek to follow you. Be with us all, Lord, in our periods of doubt and despair and in our times of happiness, health, and loving. Be with us all, Lord, until that time when in your kingdom of love our joy will know no end. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Quédate con nosotros, Señor, en, toda la, en, toda, en todas nuestras luchas, darnos mientras buscamos seguridad, seguirte, con quedar con todos nosotros, Señor, en nuestros pérdidos de dul, duda y desesperación y en nuestros tiempos de fa, felicidad, salud y amor. Quédate con nosotros, Señor. Está este momento cuando estamos juntos contigo en tu reino de amor, allá donde nuestra alegría no tenga fin. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús, oramos. Amén. Amén. Charge and benediction. Jesus come to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into the world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. Amen. Amen. Jesús vive en nosotros y está con nosotros, ofreciéndonos sanación y esperanza, hablando y actuó con autoridad. Escúchalo, sal del mundo, confía en el amor y en el poder de en el poder sanador de Dios. Vive en el paz y en que el amor y la paz de Dios estén siempre con nosotros. Amén. As we prepare to leave from this place, never from the presence of God, let us seek his glory, his peace, and his presence, not just around us, but in us. Let us be filled with the light of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit that allows us to overcome all things. Nothing is possible for us, but with God, all things are possible. So let the Lord make a way. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Father be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. And as our ushers come forward, they will lead you and instruct you how to um, exit from the building. But we say amen. <laughs>